Hello and welcome to my channel, I Went to Lose Gaming. Our newest 4 star character, Gaming, has arrived as a plungeable character. In this video, we'll be taking a look at how sweaty of a gamer Gaming is. Alright, alright, I know it's not gaming, and it's actually Gaming. And what I find particularly interesting about his name is that unlike, as far as I'm aware, most of the rest of the Chinese named characters, Gaming is actually the Cantonese version of the spelling. Otherwise, his name would be Jiaming if we followed the rest of the game's Chinese naming conventions to English. Anyway, we're here to start gaming with Gaming, and to see what a Constellation Zero Gaming is capable of. My Gaming is using multiple different builds, switching between the free to play friendly weapons, the Tidal Shadow for non vape or melt builds, the Mailed Flower for melt builds, and the Rain Slasher for vape builds. He's using the four piece Crimson Witch of Flames, and I do swap out the timepiece between Attack Percent and Elemental Mastery depending on his team. Naturally, Gaming is of course a free to play gamer at Constellation Zero, and his talents are at 9, 9, and 9. Without further ado, let's hop straight into his kit. Although we won't start off hopping because we're starting off with his grounded basic attacks, Stellar Rend. Obviously right now these physical damage basic attacks are completely unremarkable, but we will utilize them later. Let's move on to his elemental skill, Bestial Ascent. Gaming dons on a lion hat, and if he bumps into an enemy, he's able to perform a plunge attack. This plunge attack has a high multiplier, being at 391.7% at talent level 9. It has standard ICD, and from my observations, it generates two particles. It also costs Gaming 15% of his health, although his passive one regenerates 6% of it back. Honestly, they should have just made it drain 9% of his health and be done with it, but oh well, I guess they wanted to overcomplicate this for some reason. Very importantly, Gaming's elemental skills plunge attack counts as, well, plunge attack damage. And up next, we have his ultimate, Swanee's Gilded Dance. His ultimate deals an instance of pyro damage upon casting, and his little buddy, Swanee Mon Chai, is spawned. This little buddy will reset Gaming's elemental skill cooldown when it joins up with Gaming. Generally speaking, you're able to use six elemental skills in a row after using his elemental burst. And while his elemental skill does generate two particles, I believe it has an internal cooldown for generating those particles. And his elemental skill usually generates particles three times during his elemental burst for a total of six particles. There's also a condition for his burst where if Gaming is under 50% HP, his little buddy won't appear anymore to refresh his burst. As such, Gaming is heavily incentivized to be ran with a healer and to be kept over 50% HP. And if you swap him off field, he'll lose his elemental burst. We also have his second passive, which further reinforces his playstyle of wanting to be over 50% HP, which provides him 20% plunge damage bonus or 20% healing damage bonus depending on if you're over or under 50% HP respectively. Anyway, let's see just how great at gaming Gaming is with his full kit. I do provide him some healing as well so he can stay above 50% HP without any issues. Well, it was an easy and a clean one cycle of our Regis Fine friend. Ah, uh, yes, I remember when certain five stars of the past would sometimes struggle with doing this. And now we have a four star lion hat young chap doing it like it's nothing. Anyway, a stellar performance by our newest four star DPS character.
Now, Gaming's teams are actually where it gets really interesting. He has multiple options, all of which I believe are viable. The most obvious option being a classic vape team. Well, now that's already a pretty good performance. Granted, without Kazuha, setting up a Pyro Swirl requires actually thinking, but we can see some already pretty impressive 126,225 vape numbers with the Rain Slasher. And further elevating this vape playstyle, we have our favorite newly released bird mom, Shen Yun. After a bit of experimentation, when used with Xing Chou, I found this N1 cancelled plunge E combo to work quite well at fairly consistent vaping. Using N1 is important and cancelling it is also important for Xing Chou's elemental swords to activate. So this way, Gan Ming's plunge and elemental skill can vape. Now every once in a while, the Hydro Aura will actually get removed if the plunge through hits the enemy and vapes, but oh well, it is what it is. Anyway, let's try it against an actual enemy. Well, now we've managed to reach 149,036 damage on plunge. And with the help of Shen Yun, Ga Ming is actually able to output more plunges overall per rotation in comparison to if he didn't have Shen Yun on his team. But we can go even further beyond with Melt as well. <laughs> Yep, Gaming effortlessly obliterated our poor robot chicken friend thanks to the consistent cryo that Kaya provides. He was able to melt both his elemental skill and his plunge attacks to do some pretty epic damage here. Although I did find for this to not be all that consistent, depending on if you're lucky with Kaya's burst hitting the enemy at the right time. Either way, this is a pretty epic gaming moment. But wait, that's not all. Let's do a quick nuke showcase as well. This time I'm using a crit fish build. Okay, I realized that I was using the title shadow after the fact instead of the male flower, but alas, it's too late to change that now. Either way, he's already hitting for 620,472 damage at Constellation Zero with free-to-play friendly builds on supports. It's going to be pretty crazy to see what he can do with whale builds in the near future. <laughs> I also took multiple Ga Ming teams through Abyss 12, and you'll be shocked to see which team I actually preferred the most. This 4 star triple pyro plus Xing Chou team did just fine, although 12 on 1 was a bit iffy on its clear time. Granted, while I did only spend 12 minutes and 26 seconds on this entire Abyss 12 attempt, I had many issues with energy management with this team. It does appear that Ga Ming will need a significant amount of energy recharge until he gets his Constellation 4. Now this team obviously clearly can't reverse vape all the time, and admittingly, Shang Ling did a lot of the heavy lifting as per usual, but it is still an all 4 star team with Ga Ming that did quite well. Ga Ming in particular will get much better with his constellations, especially his constellation 6. For now, I do think this team carried him a bit harder than he carried the team. The second team I took into Abyss 12 was a Chevreus Overloaded team. My Chevreus is at Constellation 6 though, so do keep that in mind. But this team was super easy to use, and I only spent 8 minutes for this entire run in comparison to the previous 12 minutes for the last run. The ability for this team to simply unga boonga its problems away was an incredible asset. And while yes, Ga Ming is doing much less damage per hit, he's able to spam his attacks to his heart's content instead of trying to desperately vape things and messing up all the time. Admittingly, that's definitely a skill issue on my part. Now, if you've seen my 3 million Hydro Tulpa Challenge video, well, you'll know that Constellation 4 plus Chevreus is an absolute monster. And yes, even with this support for Vonius build, she's still doing a ton of the work here. But either way, this team felt good to use, was very easy to use, and completely unga boonga and performed very well, all things considered. 
And don't worry, I did actually try some hyper carry vape and melt teams in the current Abyss 12. And well, unfortunately, not only were they magnitudes more difficult to use, but they were far less effective at my current levels of investment. Without Xiong Ling or Chevrus or Fischl, the Hydro Tulpa was just too thick for my Constellation Zero Gomming's damage alone. Since he's only able to vape for about 120,000 damage on crit and much, much less when Bennett's burst wears off. This results in needing roughly 50 or so plunge attacks for Gomming's solo damage to take out the Hydro Tulpa. As such, at Constellation Zero, while he is able to hit for some big numbers, he definitely struggles as the solo DPS against the Hydro Tulpa. Also, for a vape team with Shen Yun and Xing Chou, I had a lot of rotation timing issues and energy issues. Xing Chou's elemental burst just throws the cooldowns of this entire team completely off balance. And Gan Ming constantly had energy issues without his Constellation 4, and no second animo character for Constellation 0 Shen Yun means that she's going to have some energy issues too. Anyway, overall Gan Ming is one of the better 4 star DPS characters at Constellation 0, but ultimately he still is a 4 star DPS character. But simply being able to comfortably single cycle the Regisfine at Constellation 0 is already pretty good for a 4 star DPS character. Unfortunately, he is very reliant on his constellations, especially his Constellation 6, which is where he'll really start to shine. At Constellation 6, his Hyper Carry, Vape, or Melt teams will be much more worth it and will allow him to excel much more since amplifying his personal damage damage will be much more effective and you'll be able to hit some pretty crazy numbers. Now let me know what you think about Ga Ming down in the comments below. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.